And starting off from what Pastor um, was sharing with us last week, I want to use that to tie into what I'll talk about today. We were talking about change last week, change, and how it's important to be productive, how it's important to make progress, how it's important to maximize our time on the earth. And bringing this into the context of what we are dealing with, I want us to see change as an ever better alignment unto obedience. An ever better alignment unto obedience. When we look into the life of Jesus, one thing that stands out is how obedient he was to God. Praise God. He did not end that title because, oh yes, he was born of the Holy Ghost. No, he earned that title by obedience. That Bible says that he learned obedience by the things that he suffered in the book of Hebrews. So he did not come about that title because he was born by the Holy Ghost. No. He earned it. Praise the Lord. He what? He earned it. And that was, and when we look into the story of um, him coming to John, it says a lot. It speaks volumes. Praise the Lord. It speaks volume. And that's what we see here is submission to heaven's authority. Obviously, Jesus is greater than John the Baptist. He's the creator. He's the word. You know, he's the word of God. He's God himself. But yet, when God wanted to launch him into what he had in mind for him, he had to submit to who? John the Baptist. Because John the Baptist was the forerunner of the Messiah. Praise the Lord. He was the forerunner. That was why when he came to John, John was like, no, I can't baptize. You are the one to baptize. You are the Christ. And he was like saying, no, I have to submit. Praise the Lord. And I want, I want to use that to say this. If we are going to be approved of God, we need to learn the life of obedience. Are you with me? We need to what? Learn the life of what? Obedience. Obedience is not, um, is not God trying to punish us. Obedience is the way God separates his children. Are you with me? Are you with me? Obedience is how God says, this one is my child. Obviously, we are born again. We are children of God. But it's not everyone that is really, how would I put it? that close to God. And it's not because God, God wants all of us to be close to him. But we choose whether or not we will be close to him. By what? By obedience. Praise the Lord. By obedience. So, change is a must for heaven's approval. What is this change about? It's a must. That means we need to come to a point whereby in our relationship with God, what God tells us is non-negotiable. What God tells us is not debatable. You know, the IRA, I think we were talking about this yesterday in, in my um, home. And um, Dr. Boa, Denise, and Renil Ren um, Pastor was, had men, made mention of this, that we want to hear what we want to hear from God. And that is not obedience. Obedience is hearing what God wants to say and doing what he says. Praise the Lord. So Jesus was that example. He did not say, oh, I'm going to do this, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go to A, but I'm not going to go to B. He had no reservation when it came to like what God wanted him to do. Praise the Lord. And so this is the only way to earn the approval of God. You, we have to be ready to be obedient. That is why Paul told Timothy, he said, be instant. That means be ready in season and out of season. Preach the gospel in season and out of season. That means irrespective of what's going on, be ready, be committed, be obedient, be dedicated to what God wants you to do. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So this is not, God is, 
actually telling us anyone can become my favorite. Anyone can become my beloved child. Anyone can become my beloved son, my beloved daughter. Why? On the basis of what? Obedience. Praise the Lord. On the basis of what? Obedience. So, as I said, obedience is a must. It's a must for heaven's approval. And when that happens, God's announcement over a man is made and the earth has to obey. Now, let's see Luke chapter 9. For that, Luke chapter 9. I'll read quickly from 29. So this is um, when Peter, James, and John went with Jesus onto a mountain to pray. So it says from verse 29, it says, And as he prayed, what happened? The fashion of his countenance was what? Altered, that means changed. And his raiment was white and glistering. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were what? Moses and what? Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his death, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. And when they were awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. And it came to pass as they departed from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here and let us make three tabernacles, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was speaking, there came a cloud once again and overshadowed them and they feared as they entered into the cloud. And there came a voice out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son, hear him. And when the voice was passed, Jesus was found alone and they kept it close and told no man in those days any of those things which they had seen. Did we see that? The voice of God came again. He said, what? This is what? My beloved son. Hear him. Hear him. In other words, when Peter was talking on the mountain and said, oh, let's make a tabernacle here. Let's make one for Moses, one for you and everything. God was saying, like, that's not important. I want you to hear Jesus. Praise the Lord. I want you to listen to Jesus. And this is what happened when God approves you. He calls men to hear you. When God approves you, he's the one that creates the stage for you. When God approves you, he's the one that creates the audience for you. When God approves you, he's the one that opens the doors for you. When God approves you, he's the one that makes things happen for you. And so many of the struggle that we experience is because we don't have the approval of God. Are you with me? We don't have the approval of God. We are not seeking to make God's heart glad. That's very heavy. We are not seeking to make his heart glad. You know, do you know what it means to make the heart of God glad? Uh, you know, I'm just, you know, I can't even fathom it with my human mind. Do you know what it means to make the creator of the universe glad? Do you know what it means to make the uncreated one glad? That's the power we wield as humans. That God can look at us and find something that he says, I, I so love this person. Are you with me? And it's a privilege to make him glad. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Glory to God. And so how do we come to this point? How do we come to this one? Now, it's important we know that sonship is by relation like when i say relationship it's by birth you know um it's not hard 
basically. But wisdom, so when we look at the wise son, we have sonship for son, we have wisdom for the wise. But wisdom, that wisdom that is needed, comes by fellowship. A wise son is an obedient son. Are you with me? A wise son is an obedient son. What makes you wise is your ability to hear God and to follow him. It's your ability to take him by the word and do his word. It's your ability to value what he says far and above any other thing. It's your ability to say whatever God says cancels every other thing I may think or I may want. That is why Jesus, when he was praying at the um, Garden of Gethsemane, he said, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Now, being a wise son does not mean you will not have your will, but then you decide to let down your will for his will. Are you with me? Are you with me? So what makes us wise? It's not because we know things more than others. It's because we are willing to say yes to his commands. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 8 actually puts it nicely in the same chapter we are dealing with. Proverbs 10 verse 8. So he says, the wise in heart will what? Receive commandments. You can say the wise son receives what? Commandment. But a prating fool will fall. The foolish son will fall. The foolish son will fail. Glory to God. And so, I believe one thing that I, I, I want to kind of, I want us to go home with today is, is the importance of just being submitted to God. Like truly submitted to God, not just in our mouth. Because that is what marked the entire life of Jesus. Jesus would not have done all he did if he were not submitted to the Father. Jesus would not have ended up giving up his life for us if he was not submitted to the Father. Everything Jesus did was because he was truly submitted. He was in his heart submitted. He had the power to do anything and everything. Pastor often tells us that submission is, even though you have power, you let it go. You, that means it's, so it's kind of authority under control. Are you with me? Authority under control. Authority under control. I want us to really look into our lives, even as, you know, Pastor said we'll be entering the year 2024. It's going to be a year of fruitfulness. And I want us to, I have, I've already, I, as I was thinking about it, I was telling, I actually told God, I said, God, I'm far away from this. I'm truly far away from this because I know there are things you say, do Mirel, and I'm like, God, mm. <laughs> I can admit that. But Jesus never said no to anything God told him to do. He never said, it can't be done. I don't feel like doing it. I don't like the person. I don't want to talk with the person. <laughs> Let's be real. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, I've forgiven the person, but, you know, stay your place. I stay in my place. But that was not the case with Jesus. Jesus was, yes, he was like, 
Can I use the word like a dummy in the hand of the father? And God wants us to be his dummy. But you're not really a dummy. You're actually wise. To others, you may look like a dummy. Praise the Lord. For example, when you choose to say sorry, even though you know you didn't do anything, are you with me? If you're with me, say amen. When you know that this person, actually you're the one that is at fault. And the person does not even come and blame, blames you. And you'll be like, and the Holy Spirit say, go and say sorry. Now, it's not about, I want this also here, it's not about what the person, it's about what God tells you to do. Do you get me? If you get me, say amen. Yes, the person may have hurt us. Yes, the person may have said things that are ridiculous about us. And humanly speaking, you'll be like, you ought to apologize to me. But what takes preeminence over what that person has done is what God says to you to do. That is where the wise son and the foolish son are separated. The foolish son would be like, God, I don't care what you are saying. It's up to you. The wise son said, God, I, I'm angry. I'm annoyed. I'm, I'm mad with this person. But Lord, if you said I should do this, I'm going to do it. Are you with me? So it's not about what people do per se. It's about what God tells you to do about that situation. Are you with me? I was, read, um, I was reading through, I don't know what particular verse I was reading in the Bible. And this is what came to me, and it buttresses this point I'm making. When God tells you, oh, you will not do this, or you shall do this. You will not go here, or you should go here. You know, yes, those are laws. Those are commandments. God is not using the laws or the commandments or whatever thing he, the instructions he's given. He's not giving them to you to prove that he's the boss. Are you with me? He's not giving you to prove that he's still God anyways. You, just like the song we sang today, you don't need a man to be the God you are. He doesn't need anyone to define him. Are you with me? But when he tells us Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. It's actually, the Ten Commandments are just a summary of thou shalt not. Okay? <laughs> Under each of them, they are subsets. So when you go to the one, thou shalt not covert your neighbor's wife. You know, you have lost. There are many subsections on there. And <laughs> you know, that's just a summary. Praise the Lord. So, but when he tells us, don't do this, do this, don't do this, do this, it's not about, I want, if you can cut this, it will be very important. It's not about what we should do and what we should not, which are important. Don't get me wrong. But it's about the source of the command. Are you with me? The source of the command. Who is the one that is giving me this word? Who is the one that is telling me don't do this? Who is the one that is telling me don't do that? So if you neglect the command, it's a proof that you have no respect for the source of the command. Are you with me? Many of us, oh God, I honor you. I honor you. I love you, God. I'm committed to you. That is why Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandment. It's not about the commandment per se. It's about my. They come from me. Are you with me? They come from me. So because they come from me and you honor me, you value me, you are committed to me, do them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So this is where the wise son and the foolish son are what? Has separated. The wise son values the word of the father because he knows this is my father. Are you with me? He knows that no matter what he tells me to do, I value God. I value him. He's my father. 
He will never tell me to do whatever would harm me. He will never tell me to do whatever that would go left. He is concerned more of me than I can ever think. Praise the Lord. Are you with me? Praise Master Jesus. So this is what we have to strive for. When we begin to honor God truly, when we begin to value his voice, what he tells us, that is when the approval will come. You know, the approval is a proof of God's delight over a man. Are you with me? That is why I said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. We saw that in Matthew chapter 3, um, verse 17. Again, we see that in Luke chapter 9, verse 35. And there he added, hear him. 